Hello everyone, my name is Joe and you're watching 360 Comics. This past weekend was Garden State Comic Fest, one of New Jersey's finest comic and pop culture conventions. It was attended by such big names as Freddie Stroma, known for playing Vigilante on The Peacemaker Show, Kevin Altieri of Batman the Animated Series fame, and of course, the legendary power duo comic book creators, Walt and Louise Simonson. I had a fantastic time, met some really great people, and even picked up an entire short box of comics, which I'm going to show you today. If you'd like to enter our 2,000 subscriber giveaway for your chance to win this copy of Secret Wars number 1, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel, hit the thumbs up for a like on this video, and leave a comment down below. You can also check out our other videos from the months of May, June, and July. Like those videos and leave a comment on them for additional entries. As you can see, this is an awesome show packed with comic book dealers all over the place. You know, ranging from those 50 cent dollar, two dollar bins all the way up to the high end wall books. In fact, I saw some pretty crazy stuff, including a Batman number six. Yes, the golden age Batman number six from 1940. Also, there were these nice $5 bins all over the place. Uh, this one had some great stuff, including Silver Age Hulk. And, uh, oh, look right there. We got Walt Simonson signing some autographs. This is definitely a show that I plan on attending in the future. Had a really great experience, and I can't wait till next year. I'm going to get things going quickly here because I have an entire short box to show you today, so we're going to be moving fast. This first bunch of comics, in fact, the majority of comics that I bought, I got from $1 and $2 bins, and sometimes I even bulk them together for a discount. So I really paid between $0.50 cents and $2 for all of these books. Let's get started right here with Spider-Gwen number 26. Now, this is the third appearance of Spider-Gwen as Gwenum, but in my opinion, the cover is what makes this book worth something. It is a super fantastic close-up of uh, you know Spider Gwen's face with uh, you know that Venom symbiote creeping in. Next is a book I'm always looking to pick up on the cheap. This is Spider-Man number 51 from the 90s run, and this is the first time the uh, name Ben Riley is used to describe the clone of Peter Parker. This is where he takes on that name. And fun fact, uh, Ben comes from Uncle Ben. And Riley comes from Aunt May's maiden name, Riley. Super big fan of this era of comics, despite the writing not being so great. It's what I grew up with. It's very nostalgic for me. There are a couple versions of this book. One has the foil cover. That's the premium one. You'll see that more often. Um, but this one actually is not that premium foil version, and it is certainly more rare, harder to find. Uh, next up, we've got Flash number 93, the second appearance of Impulse. Not a huge book, you know, just a second appearance, but, you know, a, a pretty prominent character, and who knows what is going to happen with the future of Flash in the DCEU. Will we eventually see Impulse? Maybe. Um, this one really surprised this was for a dollar, but uh, this dealer was looking to move stuff, obviously. This is Batman, the Dark Knight, um, what is it, the Dark, Dark Knight Falls, um, which is the second book, or the, sorry, the fourth book, the fourth book of the Dark Knight run by Frank Miller. Uh, apparently he had it listed for $7 at one point, but had moved it to his dollar bin, and I did double check with him, and uh, that's apparently what he wanted to sell it for. Next, we've got Avengers number six. I can't remember the significance of this book, but it is listed as Key Collector. That is a tool that I definitely use when I'm hunting through dollar bins. I knew that this was a key, but I couldn't remember why, and I, you know, quickly took out my app, looked it up, and realized that it was definitely worth more than a dollar, worth picking up for sure. Um, again, another great dollar book here. We got Amazing Spider-Man number 223. Not a key issue, but, I mean, look at the cover. Awesome cover, 70s, or not 70s, I guess this would be early 80s. Nonetheless, Bronze Age in 1981. Uh, Bronze Age Amazing Spider-Man for a buck. Yeah, really, uh, you know, I, I'll never turn that down. Uh, next, we got two copies of the same book, Superboy number one from 1993, the first um, solo run of the Connor Kent Superboy, the one that I liked the most, at least. Uh, there was not only a direct edition, but a rarer newsstand edition as well. A buck a piece couldn't turn that one down. 
Uh, this book has had some hype recently. Silver Sable number nine, first appearance of Silver Sabers, Silver Sable's father, and uh, you know he's rumored to be showing up sometime. I believe in the Sony verse. Uh, either way, a buck. I'm willing to take that risk on uh, you know a rumor filled speculation book. Uh, low price entry uh, entry point. Um, this next one's pretty nice. Detective Comics number six fifty one. Um, I love this cover, but what really drew this uh, me to this comic is it is a high grade early nineties newsstand. Nineteen ninety three. Uh, definitely a lot less newsstands in circulation at that point, um, and an all, all like a really awesome cover here. So uh, definitely worth picking up for just a buck. Moving on to some more stuff, still in the dollar to two dollar range. Totally awesome Hulk number three. This is again a book that I don't really remember the key significance of, but Key Collector helped me with that when I was looking through. I know there's a lot of keys in the first, you know, 20, 25 issues of this totally awesome Hulk run. So it's always good to check and double check to make sure you don't miss anything. Uh, next, we got X Force number four. This is the third appearance of Deadpool, and you know, Deadpool's coming back. We're, we know we're getting Deadpool three, and not only that, but we're getting it as an MCU movie. I'm excited about that. And his second and third appearance are a lot more affordable than the first, so definitely worth picking up for just a buck there. This is a spec book of mine. I've been talking about it for a while. Uh, don't think it's gonna you know pop off for uh, you know quite some time. We don't even have the X Men yet, but this is X Factor number 92, first appearance of Exodus, an Omega level mutant would be a great, you know, bigger, not like one of the big bads, but, uh, you know, certainly one of the uh, more formidable opponents of the heroes in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Next, we've got uh, West Coast Avengers, and this is the original miniseries, uh, which number one is their first appearance. This is number two. And there was also number three and four. It seems like we might be getting a West Coast Avengers team. Um, you know, Clint Barton, Hawkeye, who was the leader of the team, is still around. A lot of the other characters that have been on the team, including uh, Moon Knight and Wonder Man, who we now know is coming, were all members of uh, this team at some point. So it is totally possible. Same with War Machine. He's uh, you know, a great addition there and uh, still around the MCU. This is one of the best finds of the day. This is not only a spec book of mine, I think it is totally an undervalued key. X-Men number 184, and this was in fact in a dollar bin, was very surprised to see that. This is the first appearance of Forge. I've talked about him before as being a great backup X-Man and uh, you know just a character who I think could be utilized really, really nicely in the films. Uh, then we've got Justice Society of America number three featuring a beautiful Alex Ross cover of Cyclone. And I know Jim from Bronzeville Comics has been telling me for months he's been picking up this book as well as Cyclone's first appearance because I think she's either rumored or been cast to being appearing appear, appear, something I, f I forget exactly but um nonetheless uh great cover can't really turn down these awesome alex ross covers on this uh justice society run here and uh, you know if it's a character that's going to be coming to the screen even better uh, this next one, very hyped to find this. This book has calmed down a lot. It only sells for about $10 now, but at one point it was selling for like uh, upwards of like 25, 30, maybe even more than that. Um, this is Avengers number, I forget what number this is, number two. And it features um, Kang and a bunch of different Kang variants on the front, Amortis, Ramatut, um, Iron Lad. So the reason this is going to be, you know, a pretty awesome book is because Kang's coming and we're probably going to see a bunch of different Kang variants in the MCU. I hope so. I think this is a, a great book that showcases all of them on this amazing cover. Uh, next, we've got Bone number four. Um, I always try to pick up early bone issues, um, when I see them, even if they're second, third, fourth printing or whatever, um, because this is just a really popular indie series from the early nineties. In fact, bone number one, um, is a, 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 just a really expensive book, um, that is really super, super hard to find. Um, so if you ever find that one, you know, obviously later printings are, are one thing, but the first printing of that book, be on the lookout for it. It could show up in a 90s collection that you're getting at some point and might be a pleasant surprise. Next, we've got Batman Annual number two. I believe this is the first appearance of um, uh, 
Batman's daughter as Batwoman. I think so. I think Helena Wayne um, as Batwoman. I might be wrong about that. I, I know it's a key. I recognize the awesome cover. Um, I'm pretty sure that that is the key significance. Um, but yeah, definitely something that uh, you can always utilize Key Collector to uh, to find. Um, next up, we've got another copy of X-Men number 92. Like I said, I always pick these up for a buck. And then we got Batman the Cult. Now, this is the entire four issue. We got issue four here. Issue three. Two. And one, the entire four issue mini series of Batman the Cult. And I, I paid about two bucks a piece on these. I think it was like seven dollars total because I bundled it together with a, a couple other things. And uh, yeah, great four issue Jim Starlin run and uh, something that is going to be staying in my personal collection. Uh, then we've got, oh, this book. I have mentioned this a couple times Batman number 43. It's got a very bright cover. It's kind of hard to see here. But um, Batman 43, this is the first appearance of Mr. Bloom. This is from the uh, the Snyder um, Capullo run of uh, you know Batman New 52. Awesome cover, in my opinion. Awesome character. One that I could totally see being utilized in some way, um, you know, whether it's on the big screen or the small screen, animated or, um, you know, live action. Then we've got Green Lantern Core number 43. First appearance of Guy Gardner as a... Uh, red lantern you can see him on the cover ripping off his green lantern costume and having the red underneath then we got a reprint of green lantern number one from the 1960s the silver age first solo green lantern featuring hal jordan uh, a lot of people dislike this cover because it's got a giant puppet clown on it but nonetheless it is a classic and important book and uh you know i'm a big fan of reprints and you know collecting reprints if you can't afford the real thing just like this one right here we got giant size x-men one the true believers version great book to pick up if you're looking for a reader copy or just a copy to display and don't want to shell out minimum like a thousand dollars for a low grade one um you know of the real thing then we've got captain america number 287 here a mike zek cover very popular artist um you know does great great work especially during this time period on captain america so that is definitely a coveted cover right there just for who the artist is um, then we got Batman number 50. This is the, uh, the, the wedding of, uh, Batman and Selena Kyle Catwoman. And I believe this is the cover B. I think the, the cover A has the full body shot of them at the wedding. Then this is the cover B and there were a bunch of other variant covers as well. Um, book sells pretty well though. So, uh, you know, pick it up for a buck or two. Definitely. Then we got blue beetle. Number one, this character is, uh, is coming. Coming to the screen soon. Originally slated as a television series, I believe it's been bumped up to a feature-length film, which is awesome. Um, and this is the uh, the first solo Blue Beetle book featuring um, Jaime Reyes as uh, as uh, Blue Beetle, um, who is the one introduced in Infinite Crisis. Uh, I believe he's in number three, and then appears as Blue Beetle in number five. This book has kind of come and gone. This is the first appearance of Rintra, that green minotaur that appears in multiverse of madness he didn't have a huge role in that movie despite being in it but nonetheless he could continue in the mcu we may see him again he might be more important nonetheless a key with mcu connection for a buck i'll take it i will take it and we've got amazing spider or sorry regular spider-man not amazing just the regular the todd mcfarlane run of spider-man number 15 classic eric larson cover featuring beast and spidey on the front then we've got superman 123 first appearance of superman blue this like electric blue superman costume uh can't remember if this is the variant or not but uh they both hold about the same value kind of between five and twelve dollars somewhere in there um but then we got this one was a nice find because this is a harder to find book. This is uh, Blade Sins of the Father number one. Uh, well, it's a one shot. So it's a nice thick book. Now, there are two versions of this book. One was given out with the movie, I believe. You had to go see the movie and it has a photo cover. Um you know, related to the movie. This one is the, just the regular version. This one is a lot less rare, a lot more common, but nonetheless still is a uh, coveted book by Blade Collectors. Then we've got 
Oh, Dark Hawk number two. This is a book I I've been picking up for a buck for a while now. Um, Dark Hawk has you know jumped up in popularity in the past couple years. Issue number one used to be not a dollar bin book, but like very low value. Uh, now I see it selling for like 30, 40 bucks on the regular nine eights or a couple hundred. This is the second appearance of Dark Hawk. That's about it. Nothing super special other than that. Um, but for a buck, sure, why not? Uh, we got, oh, this was a good find. Spectacular Spider-Man number 178. First appearance of Ashley Kafka. And uh, she's a character who has some prominence in Spider-Man's history. But recently, a clone of her has become the Queen Goblin who was in the Amazing Spider-Man run recently. And um, for that reason, this book has kind of jumped up to being $10 to $15. Um, so, you know, obviously pick it up for a buck. No problem. There were two copies of it. One was really beat up and I left that one behind for someone else to grab. But I grabbed this one for myself. This one was really surprising. Uh, this is Sandman number one from the 70s, from the Bronze Age. And uh, it's got a really, really faded cover, as you can see. You know, there's almost no co color left on the characters. And even that blue background is quite faded. Nonetheless, to pay $2 for this book fantastic it is complete it is intact you know there's it's rough it's got like a couple you know it's got a bend up in the corner some spine ticks but it's definitely worth more than just two bucks so definitely an easy pick up there then we've got spider-man number one well spider-man the, the free comic book day i believe this was 2000 when was this 2020 2019 this is like the first um cameo appearance of virus and codex they were supposed to appear in a venom book first but i think i think the story is that one was the the, the printing of that one was delayed so this actually ended up coming out first uh, it doesn't hold too much value kind of only like five dollars the venom one is the one to pick up um Nonetheless, for that cheap price, here's another free comic book day book. This one is a lot nicer. This actually um, is the first appearance of Simon Baz, um, first full appearance of Simon Baz. A lot of people grab that Green Lantern Zero, but this is actually his first appearance, and it's a tough book to find in high grade because it was a giveaway free comic book day book. Guess what? There was not just one, but two. This one being unstamped blank on the label. They do have a couple spine ticks. They're not super high grade. Nine go for like a few hundred dollars so I'm, I'm not not you know too mad about a couple little spine ticks on there then we've got the incredible hulk number 265 this is the first appearance of the rangers they are a like old western themed superhero team uh you know the original ghost rider knight rider uh red wolf um nothing you know phenomenal but just a nice hulk key from the bronze age all right, we're moving on. We're still in these $1 and $2 books. All of these you can see, and we'll talk about the total price of all this at the end. What? I got to spawn one from a dollar bin? Yes, I did, but it has some water damage on it. Um, this one, not too bad, um, but, you know, still, uh, water damage, it's going to be lower grade. Nonetheless, $1 or $2, whatever it was for a spawn number one, I'm going to take that 100% of the time. And what's better than one of them? Two copies of spawn number one for that low, low price. Happy about that. Then we got Silver Sable number one. We spoke about Silver Sable earlier and the rumors. Um, great pickup for uh, number one of her solo series. Then we've got Hawkeye number one. Same thing, you know, first of his solo series. Um, you know, character that's been in the MCU for a while and it seems to be continuing on. Spectacular Spider-Man 200. This is the death of Harry Osborn, a foil cover from the 90s. Uh, pretty nice high-grade copy as well. Very happy to find that for such a cheap price. Usually it sells for between $10 and $15. Then we got Peter Parker, the Spectacular Spider-Man number three, first appearance of Lightmaster, Minor villain, but nonetheless, a, a 70s, early, uh, single-digit, spectacular Spider-Man book with a key first appearance of a villain. I will always take that for a buck. Uh, Wonder Woman, number, I forget, 200-something? 255, first appearance of Bushmaster. Nothing to write home about, but again, a key issue from the uh, the Bronze Age here. 
for a buck. Uh, Moon Knight number 36. Very happy to find this. This is um, the you know classic cover featuring the Punisher, another really popular character. And uh, you know just the cover alone um, makes this book worth between five and ten dollars. So to pay a buck or two for it was a no brainer. Then we got Fantastic Four number 284. This is a book that's showing up in my next um, spec video, so you get a little preview of it. This is the first time that Invisible Girl starts going by the name Invisible Woman. I think in the MCU we're going to hear her called Invisible Woman. We'll probably not hear her called Invisible Girl at all. Um, so I, I think this is a, a decent book to pick up, especially if you can find it in a dollar bin like I have many times. Rogue number one. First solo book, easy choice to pick it up for that cheap. Then we got Universe X number six featuring um, Moon Knight on the front. This is just a classic Alex Ross cover. People love this one. And with the popularity of Moon Knight, um, you know, growing leading up to the show and uh, probably sustaining, uh, especially if he sticks around in the MCU, I think it's just a good book to have. Uh, then we've got Daredevil number 236 with this uh, classic... Um, border cover from the 25th anniversary of fantastic four number one i will always pick these covers up if i can get them for a dollar fantastic four number 358 first appearance of Pybok, the power scroll who is rumored to be showing up in um secret invasion we'll see if that actually happens but nonetheless it is a uh, a nice little key from that fantastic four run uh, moving on to some more books that are one or two dollars. We got Fantastic Four number 238. First appearance of Aunt Petunia, who is the thing's aunt. He mentions her all the time. And then finally she showed up in this issue. Then we've got uh, 52 number nine. And this is uh, one of the cameos of uh, Batwoman before she fully appears uh, in issue, I think, third or something like that i don't remember exactly but nonetheless um a key issue we got this wolverine venom crossover here this is a great book i believe there's like four three or four issues that has these two uh crossing over this is not the first one uh, i can't remember what number that is 116 or something like that but nonetheless uh people like to collect this crossover two very very popular characters um, then we've got Alpha Flight number 53. This is the first Jim Lee cover art ever. Yeah, that's about it there is to say about that. Um, great book. Always will pick this up when I can get it nice and cheap. Uh, Silver Surfer number 53, first appearance of Aldon. Rumored to be appearing in Secret Invasion, but uh, certainly not confirmed yet. Easy pickup for a buck, though. Uh, this one is Morbius number one, even though the movie has gone, uh, you know, very sour in most people's eyes. It's still his first solo book, and it is part of the Rise of the Midnight Suns, so it seemed worth picking up. And it does have the uh, the poster with it that it uh, was printed with. And we got Fantastic Four number 378. This is the first appearance of Franklin Richards as Psylord. I always try to pick up these Franklin Richards keys because he is very likely eventually making his way into the MCU. Then we've got Silver Sable number nine again, first appearance of her father. We already talked about that book, so I'll go on to another Franklin Richards key, number 222, first appearance of Franklin Richards as Avatar, I believe. I think that's this book. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Nonetheless, a Franklin Richards uh, related comic book from the Fantastic Four. I actually think I'm wrong. I don't think this is his first appearance as Avatar, but it's got Franklin on the front, and uh, that's good enough for me. Darth Vader number seven, multiple first appearances in this book, and there also um, was a Darth Vader number five. I'll get to it in a minute, but nonetheless, this is the first run of Darth Vader, I believe 2015. This is the, the run that gave us Dr. Aphra, Black Kersantan, and a lot of other characters. They are clearly pulling characters from the comics into the actual Star Wars cinematic universe, so it, I think it is very likely that we will see um, you know these characters show up. So anytime I can get them for cheap, um, I will gladly grab them. 
We got New Mutants number three. First, I believe this is first cameo appearance of Demon Bear. I really liked the New Mutants movie. I know a lot of people didn't, but I thought it was actually really well done. And I hope to see um, more of those characters as time goes on in the MCU. Another copy of Hawkeye number one from his first solo series back in the 80s. And we're moving along to... Fantastic Four, oh, well, this is a what if. This is what if number 36. What if Fantastic Four um, never got their powers? So this is them trying to do all the stuff that they do without their powers. Uh, kind of an interesting take on a superhero story. Uh, we, we've seen a bunch of different stories where people lose their powers, but this is what if they had never gained them. Um, then we've got Green Lantern Corps number two. This is the first appearance of... Oh, what's the character's name? Necron, I believe, who a lot of people are speculating on for the Green Lantern HBO Max television series. We'll see if that happens. Either way, great book to pick up. This was pretty nice. This is uh, Doom Patrol, uh, sorry, DC Showcase number 95. Now, this is the second appearance of the new Doom Patrol team and, and some origin stories in there. But the real good one is this one, number 94. These just go together, so I picked them both up. First appearance of Doom Patrol, the new team of Doom Patrol, and this was the team utilized for the uh, the television show um, on HBO Max, which is a really great show, underrated in my opinion. We're more than halfway there. We're going to keep moving. Another one of these 25th anniversary borders, this one, Web of Spider-Man number 20. Great book to pick up. And The Flash, number one, very happy to get this so cheap. This is the first Wally West solo Flash story. And given the, all, the, all the trouble that we're seeing with Ezra Miller, I think that eventually they will probably be canned. They will not appear as The Flash anymore. And they might move on to Wally West being The Flash since Ezra Miller's Flash is Barry Allen. Then we've got um, Ultimate Spider-Man, number 34, one of the early... Um, books featuring the the venom symbiote in the um ultimate spider-man run and we've got amazing spider-man number 375 this is not only this cool foil cover it's also first appearance of carl brock eddie's father and Anne weighing his uh fiance wife depending on what <laughs> universe we're in um Ruins. This is Ruins number two, the second book of the Ruins run. This I picked up for a friend because he was looking for it. So great. I got something for a buddy for real cheap. Cloak and Dagger number one. This is the first book of their uh, first solo uh, ongoing book. And I think were there two copies? Yeah, there might have been two copies, but maybe they weren't next to each other. So we'll move on to this next one. Um, Green Lantern number 176. First appearance of the Demolition Crew, I believe they're called. I forget exactly, but uh, you know, just a minor Green Lantern he from the 1980s. Early br or late Bronze Age. Uh, then we've got X-Men 207. Anytime there's a good classic Wolverine cover like this for a buck or two, I'm going to pick it up. Awesome book. I think this is a very underrated cover as well. Then we got X-Men number one, the Magneto cover. In my opinion, the best cover of uh, all these X-Men number ones from the 90s, the Jim Lee run. Um, but that's just my opinion. Speaking of Magneto, we got X-Men number 200 here, a milestone issue, Trial of Magneto. Um, another copy of that Spider-Man free comic book day from a couple years ago, X factor number 18, first appearance of the, uh, horseman of the apocalypse who, uh, you know, if apocalypse ever shows up in the MCU, certainly will be showing up alongside him. Another copy of that first book, spider Gwen, And these were from two different dealers. I was very surprised to see two of these in two different dollar bins. Um, then we've got. Wonder Woman number 18, first appearance of Cersei. Uh, not Cersei from the Eternals, but obviously the DC version of uh, that namesake. We got Omega Men number five, the second appearance of Lobo, first time he is named um, you know, Lobo. And then we got that second copy of Cloak and Dagger number one. I knew I had it in there somewhere. Um, this is great. This is Batman, uh, sorry, Detective Comics. Um, number 675 and uh, it is an awesome foil cover it is high grade and it is also signed right down there on the bottom you might not be able to see it it's in silver pen by scott hannah 
great stuff. Uh, you know, can't really complain about picking up signed comic books. And speaking of, we got a couple more here. This one is Batman Nevermore number three. I'm not sure who signed this book. I believe this was a Bernie Wrightson cover, though, so maybe that's Bernie Wrightson's signature. I haven't compared it to anything yet, um, but definitely going to look into it. This is either way staying in the PC because I love the Batman Nevermore uh, crossover with Edgar Allan Poe. Kind of a little bit gimmicky, but nonetheless, uh, you know, big fan of that kind of stuff. Um, these next few I'm going to show you. Oh, nope. They, I guess all the signed books weren't next to each other. I did not do a good job at organizing these. Anyway, we've got What the number 20 here. This is the first appearance of Pork Grind, who is uh, Spider Ham's version of Venom. Then we've got Green Lantern number 81, the death, uh, or yeah, the death of Hal Jordan. Um, great 90s cover as well. We got some reprints in here too. This is a reprint of Avengers number four, the first Silver Age appearance of Captain America. And uh, we got TMNT number two, TMNT Adventures number two. I always pick up this like late 80s TMNT stuff because it is certainly um, a popular franchise and really all the books, if you can get them for a dollar or two, are worth it. Then we got Deadpool number seven. This is an homage to uh, the Demon in the Bottle, but it features Deadpool on the front. Very comical. Ha ha. Love it. Uh, this is a reprint. Uh, this is the 10th anniversary reprint of Walking Dead number one. About a $10 book, too. Uh, speaking of reprints, here's some more True Believers. We've got, uh, there were multiple copies of this. I want to see exactly how many there were. It looks like um, five other copies. So, yeah, this is Deadpool's first appearance in New Mutants 98. True Believers, um, you know, the, the reprints of that. And then there were some reprints of another book here, um, which was very happy to find these. A really popular book. Uh, looks like there are only three of them. I thought there were more of these, but first appearance of Venom, Spider-Man 300. Again, the true believer um, reprint of that. So picking these up for a buck or two definitely made me happy. But what made me more happy is... Uh, these next books because this is my favorite indie title of all time my favorite horror story of all time scott snyder with art by jock image comics witches and all of these are number ones all of these are the first printings of number ones there were five of them in there paid a buck or two a piece and um yeah, it's it sells on eBay for you know twenty twenty five dollars nine eights, well over a hundred dollars. They they were around like two hundred at one point. They've come down a little bit. Um, I think that it will eventually end up being uh, picked up and made into probably a show, probably a show rather than a movie. Um, then we got Batman uh, from New Fifty Two. This is Batman Annual One. It is a Mister Freeze origin story. Very popular book with a great cover and. Uh, Definitely worth picking up for the price. Uh, this is Miss Marvel number five. This is the first appearance of Miss Marvel's cat, Chewy, I believe. I believe that's what the key significance is here. Um, yeah, not a not a, a book that I'm going to be holding on to or anything, but pretty cool. This one's great. This is uh, Amazing Spider-Man, I believe, 112. Uh, origin of Peter Parker and Aunt May and uh, Uncle Ben. It is a returned copy that has the top ripped off, but it's still an amazing Spider-Man book. So for a dollar, I, I could not turn that down. Um, you know, this is would be, I guess, very, very early Bronze Age. I believe this was a 15 cent book, if I remember correctly. Um, here's that other Darth Vader book that I was talking about. Multiple first appearances and, uh, you know, some potential for um, those characters being put into movies. If you've stuck around this long, hey, good for you. There's still a bunch of really great books. Um, Marvel Comics Presents number 78. Yep. Featuring uh, Weapon X. This whole run is, you know, for a dollar a piece is definitely worth picking up. That was the only one in there, though. Then we got Daredevil number 15. I'm surprised this book isn't worth more given what we saw in the Hawkeye show. In this issue, Echo shoots um, Kingpin in the face, and that happens in the Hawkeye show. Spoiler alert, but, I mean, it's been out for over six months, so you, you probably should have seen it. 
yeah, I, I'm going to hold on to copies of this because I think it will be uh, relevant in the Echo Limited series uh, on Disney+. Plus. All right, these next ones. Um, all the rest of these are signed books. Uh, I forget exactly who signed all of them. This one's signed by Scott Hampton. This is Legends of the Dark Knight number 76. Signed by Scott Hampton right there. Um, these next I actually have kind of organized into little sets. Um, this one is Gotham Knights number one, two, and three. Signed by John Ostander. And uh, you can see they're all signed along the side there. Um, you know, great little batch that I'm going to put together and sell. Um, there was also number one and two. Signed by both John Ostander and Mary Mitchell in gold ink on the side here. And last but not least, a uh, another copy of number one signed by those two as well. Um, you know, great little signature packs that uh, they're going to be up for sale. I'm not going to be keeping uh, probably any of these in my personal collection. So that is it for the $1 and $2 books. But there were some higher value books. Not a lot. So this is going to go very quickly. Um, and there is one big book at the end, actually a really important book in my opinion. This was five bucks. Can't turn down first appearance of Tim Drake for just five bucks. It is nice high grade as well. Uh, this book, Nice House on the Lake, exploded in popularity last year. A James Tynan horror story from DC Black Label. Not only was there one, but there were two of these. They sell on eBay for about 25 bucks. Definitely was happy to pick it up for cover price, you know, four ninety nine, five five dollars or whatever. And I actually bundled this together with some other books, so I paid about mm, four dollars each. Uh, then we got Ultraman number one. This is the first ever Virgin comic book, uh, meaning without the trade dress. Now, if you look, it looks like it has the trade dress, but that's actually on the poly bag inside. Ultraman, super popular character in Japan. Probably will end up having something done, uh, whether it be, you know, a movie or a whole universe, television show, something. So worth picking up. Uh, John Carter, Warlord of Mars, number one. Very surprised to see this one for just five dollars. Usually sells for, I think, about 15 or 20. Um, Batman, number 570, featuring this awesome Joker cover with Joker there. Chilling in the chair. Um, I believe this is the third in continuity appearance of Harley Quinn as well. Batman number 13. This is about a 10 or $12 book. Um, you know, part of the death in the family run and an awesome, uh, Joker die cut cover. And then Donnie Cates venom number one. Very surprised to see this for just five bucks, given the popularity of this run and, and Donnie Cates in general, as well as venom in general. Uh, same with this Sandman number. What is this? I can't remember what number this is. Number five, Sandman number five, first appearance of Merv Pumpkin, and uh, Sandman's coming to the, uh, I believe, some streaming service um, relatively soon. Then we've got Peter Parker, the Spectacular Spider-Man, number 22, first meeting of Spider-Man and Moon Knight. Will this happen in the MCU? Yeah, probably, if Moon Knight sticks around, so might as well grab this book um, as a little spec. Then we've got uh, Invincible Iron Man, number 126, classic cover by, is this Bob Layton? I think so. No, this is, uh, yes, it's... Uh, John Romita Jr. and Bob Layton. Uh, I believe this is part of the Demon in the Bottle run. And uh, yeah, that's that's it for the $5 books. There were a couple that were $10. Um, and then we have a big reveal for the, the nice book at the end. Uh, first of the $10 books, Green Lantern number 23 from all the way back in the Silver Age of comics. This is the first appearance of the Tattooed Man, who's right on the front. Uh, not a huge character, but nonetheless... Um, you know, worth it for just 10 bucks. And then the first appearance of Cletus Cassidy, who later becomes Carnage in Amazing Spider-Man number 361. This is ASM 344. The last of the $10 books, all the same, four copies of the same book right here. X-Men number 450. This is the first in-continuity appearance of Laura Kinney, X-23. They had these for 10 bucks. Guess what? I said, hey, if I buy all four of them, can I have them for 30? So I got, you know, buy three, get one free. Definitely very happy about that because that is uh, you know, somewhat of a spec book of mine. 
Um, the very last book. Let's take these down and show you the last book of the bunch, and then we'll talk about how much I paid for everything. Um, this was a great deal that I bundled together and got for an even better deal. Tales of Suspense number 42, the fourth appearance of Iron Man, Tony Stark, right there on the cover in his classic uh, gold Iron Man costume before he changed over um, to the, uh, the, the, the one that we know him in, the red and yellow um, Iron Man costume. This is uh, awesome, awesome stuff. Love this early Silver Age um, Marvel. And uh, yeah, 19, uh, what was this? 19, was it 64 or something like that? Um, either way, first, uh, sorry, fourth Iron Man. And uh, I got this for a great deal, a really, really nice deal. Um, basically, they had it at 75 bucks, which I already thought was a pretty good deal, but I ended up bundling it together with a bunch of other books and getting $14 knocked off of everything. So I really paid like 61 bucks for this book specifically. Uh, that being said, let's talk about how much I paid for everything. This entire short box of comics that I showed you today in this very long video cost me $329. Most of the stuff, like I said, was from dollar bins and $2 bins. Now, the total value of this stuff is clearly over $1,000, without a doubt. I, I didn't even bother, like, actually adding things up because there is, it's probably more along the lines of, like, $1,500, um, This one's probably staying in the personal collection, but even keeping this book in the personal collection, like I said, I spent, like, $61 on it I should easily be able to triple maybe even quadruple my money over time a lot of this stuff is going to sit for a while a little bit more obscure of keys but nonetheless keys at that ones that hold value ones that have some future significance and some uh, you know definitely a high level of potential given what is coming out on a regular basis. Uh, let me know how you think I did in the comments down below. Give this video a thumbs up for a like. Hit the subscribe button. Turn the bell on for notifications. And if you lasted to the end of this very long video, I much appreciate your time watching. Thank you so much. And until next time, turn the page, wash your hands.